love to be smiled at, just like real grown-ups do. And they respond just like real grown-ups do. And then when the parents notice, the parents are smiling. You know, because they somebody thought their child was cute. It's just little things that go so far. And if you can do something big, I think that's do true. it. I do believe that is true. And think about social media. Isn't it uplifting to see stories that have a happy ending? Stories where, say, somebody in the military tells their kids, I won't be home for your birthday, I can't make it home, and the kid's disappointed, unhappy, crying, and then the parent shows up. They yes. got the leave. And they show up, they've been hiding. And the kid's all happy, crying with happiness, rushes into their arms. It's a feel-good moment. It is we a feel-good feel good moment. Why can't we feel good like that more? We can. Well, and Marissa Pierce talking yes. about it's a matter of what's in your head. And, and this is what I was talking about. Marissa, Marissa Pierce, this was this experiment. They put, uh, they put some people, let's see, they put people who were in their 50s, age, in their 50 years of age, into a compound or a retreat where they were isolated from other people. And in that environment, it was rigged to be 20 years earlier in time. So they were listening to the music of their youth, surrounded with magazines from their youth and art from their youth. And there was nothing more modern in their environment from, that was anything newer than 20 years old. And after two weeks or so of being in that environment, these people actually tested physiologically being younger. Their finger lengths were longer. Their heart rates were better. Their blood pressure was better. They had many physical measurements that were taken as a baseline at the beginning of the study and then compared after two weeks. These people had become literally rejuvenated. They were younger because they had thought and immerse themselves in that younger experience and timeline for that period of time. Well, if you can do that over two weeks, Marissa Peer says, you can do this in an ongoing basis and through a hypnotic suggestion, I would suppose, in her case, but you don't even need hypnosis. If you just keep telling yourself, I'm young, if you keep telling yourself, I'm young, I'm young, instead of, I'm old, I'm old. Now, younger listeners can't relate to this, obviously, <laughs> but baby boomers can Okay, my generation can, and I'm a young, I'm on the young side of a baby boomer. I'm the last year of baby boomers. But if you tell yourself, oh, I'm old, I'm old, and I can't, I can't, you won't. You, you oh. will be old, and you won't yes. be able to. And that's true of people at any age. If you say you can't, you're going to be right. And if you say you can, you're going to be right. And I have eradicated can't because... This whole process that I started in April of trying to get, you know, learn how to do sound, learn, which obviously tonight is not where it was last week. It's okay. It's a different headset, so that's my fault. But it's a learning curve. I have not once, I did say I'm done once, but I have not said I can't do this because that I wouldn't be able to. I've got to, and everybody, you know, you have cancer survivors who are wondering if they can tolerate one more treatment, right? My stuff is nothing. But you have people, you know, they're taking a child for more testing, and they don't know if they can survive that. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't know if that's that person that needed that smile you gave. Or the cola that you bought them. You know, I mean, like you said, it's random. It's imperative that we reach out to each other. And I don't like social media because I think it has eradicated human interaction to a point that you don't meet eyes. You don't converse with respect because... You're used to being behind a screen. You know, if you can't have a conversation, then you can't do it. And 
it's just the way it is. You know, it's just, we have to learn to evolve into good humans still using social media. And we're not quite there yet because it's new. I agree with you, Kat. But I also, but to take your thinking even a little further, I believe, and other metaphysicists believe, that human thought and emotion, this is getting back to the Japanese experiments on freezing water, you don't need to be interacting with a person to help them, to uplift them, or to heal them. And, and I'm getting into kind of faith healing, if you will, that we can meditate on peace and it will have a rippling effect into our immediate environment, around the earth, out into the cosmos. And this is behind a lot of the CE5 initiatives to contact alien intelligences. This is behind prayer groups. Yes, it all is. All denominations and religions. Let's let's get together if we can collectively but even if we're alone in a room or on top of a mountain in a cave if we meditate on raised consciousness and kindness and love if we hold love in our hearts it will do good in the world and you just take that on faith well it and does you don't necessarily need a specific instance i smiled at that person and they smiled back that's very gratifying and that's very uplifting but if you really believe in peace and you're a light worker you will constantly emanate no matter what you're doing even if you're actually debating something with somebody or even in a bad state of mind a negative emotional state which happens to all of us from time to time if you can keep somewhere in your consciousness, I am a being of light, I really want to improve the situation for everybody, not drag us all down. I exactly. Mean, elevation, not dissension. If you keep that in your consciousness as much as possible and, and become habitual in that, it will have an effect on the world. And people who are talking and writing about this great awakening, that seems to have started around, really gotten momentum in 2014. It's a, it's a pivotal year for many people that I've met in paranormal circles. Something happened or that really kicked people, metaphysically speaking, uh, consciousness in 2014 and got them talking about and acting out peace, love, let's change the world, let's come up with solutions to clean up the oceans, let's come up with solutions instead of going to great lengths to explain why it can't be done. Exactly. It's very encouraging. But we are, I, we're I going have, to break, Jane. younger generations for going ahead and disregarding the people that say, no, it can't be done, and doing it anyway. Like I Musk. Lie. Everyone of every age, but there's a lot of it coming out of the younger generations, and I say, right on. You and know. with that, we are going to break. So just hang loose and we'll be right back.
WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experience Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. And we are back. We are sitting here having Jean Claire Breda with us. I'm Kat Hobson, your host here on Paranormal Experience. And we were talking about interaction. And one thing that I really wanted to emphasize is that I I do tend to stay positive because that is what I'm supposed to be. When we have an opportunity, you have to take it because you don't know who you're going to affect. While I recognize the downfalls of situations that are out there, my job is to be positive. People always ask, you know, act like I'm such a Pollyanna like you were talking about. But I'm not. I'm just, I know what I'm supposed to be. Just like, I guess just like you do and other people who recognize their role. Would you agree that that's what part of this ascension is? What part of this awakening is? That's a difficult question, Kat. First, let me say that your positive attitude is very attractive, and I mean that in a physics sense. It, it's attractive also figuratively, but you attract people literally because of your positive attitude. You attracted me, and I can be very cynical, I admit it. <laughs> I, I don't find you so. I, I don't think that consciousness raising necessarily means... We're bliss ninnies. Oh, no. Bliss ninnies, which is kind of a post-hippie term. People who took maybe a few too many drugs and never came back from that euphoric state of mind. I don't think that... In other words, I think if we can all agree to disagree from time to time, it's fine to have individual differences. Yes. But there, there's got to be a reason why the world operates the way it does and we don't seem to be living in this world of love and light that a lot of people awakened in consciousness however it happened right are, are experiencing and advocating and promoting through their through their lives their work their speech their actions it's, it's very uplifting to see someone positive. We're monkey see, monkey do creatures. If you see somebody happy and positive, it's likely to rub off. Mm -hmm. And the opposite is also true. Yes. So people love you, Kat, because you are such a positive light. That said, I think it's impible to be happy, cheerful Pollyanna all the time without and that's a doubt not even the goal or objective no if we could be respectful to each other have reasonable discussions even if we don't disagree but not name call we we're talking about social media and how it's kind of, it can be kind of a bring down well it could also be a big build up yes we hear those feel good stories right if you put your blinders on and your filters on and filter out the negative and amplify up the positive there's nothing wrong with that and people can accuse you of being, oh, Pollyanna, I suppose, again, there's that word. <laughs> but so what? It seems to be pervasive. Deal with it. You know, deal with it. It's okay. But I don't, I, I do believe it's impossible to be super nice. It's certainly not in my, my nature to be super nice much at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't sell that down. You are, you <laughs> are nice. My childhood, as most people do. But, uh. And I'm being a little, I, I'm, I am. I know. Here. I do know. Uh, Just so everybody knows, she truly is kind of a Pollyanna. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, like attracts like, right? And we were drawn. One, so. one thing I do know as a mystic. 